Hey again, everyone. This is Samantha here with SMNP Reviews, and we tend to get a lot of questions about these three skin disorders, lichen planus, lichen sclerosis, and lichen simplex chronicus. It seems to be something that we all learned about in school, but never really committed it to memory. I thought I would make a quick PowerPoint here to eliminate any confusion about these disorders. A lot of people tend to mix these up, so I also wanted to present it in a clear cut way that everybody could remember. I also do not own any of the pictures presented in this PowerPoint, and I have included a reference page for those. Lichen planus is an inflammatory skin condition commonly seen with other immune disorders, such as ulcerative colitis, vitiligo, and myasthenia gravis. And like other immune disorders, it can be exacerbated by stress and infection. So where on the body does lichen planus typically occur? This is a helpful way to differentiate it from the other lichen skin disorders. This is usually seen on the flexor surfaces of the limbs. It can occur on the skin, the mouth, or even the genitals. Lichen planus definitely can vary in presentation as seen above in these pictures from the National Health Service and Primary Care Dermatology Society. On the skin itself, it typically presents as reddish purple, flat topped bumps that are pretty itchy. Some lesions actually have a more lacy and white appearance if they are on the mucous membrane specifically. There are actually varying types of lichen planus, but that is information overload for your exam. And remember, you just need to know the basics. So how long do patients have these lesions before they go away? Most resolve in about six months or so. And because of that, we consider it to be self-limiting. So how will we treat mild cases? Just some simple topical steroids. Steroids are a part of the basic care of many things you will see in primary care as new NPs, so definitely keep those in the back of your mind. You could also prescribe some antihistamines here as well. So let's take a second look at these two pictures and you're probably thinking, which should you treat with steroids and which should you leave alone? Definitely the one that is pink in appearance should get those steroids. The other example is in the post-inflammatory phase and is pretty much healed up. Steroids won't be very helpful for this patient in the second picture. I put both of these on here to show you just how much it can vary in appearance. All right, now we have lichen simplex chronicus. The way that I keep this straight in my head is I just think about that simple lichenification. Do you remember what that is from school? It's basically when the skin becomes leathery or rubbery in appearance due to repetitive scratching or rubbing. What other skin condition do you think might lead to this? It has to be something intensely pyritic that leads to continual scratching. What about atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema? Eczema is extremely pyritic, which leads to continuous scratching where lichenification can occur. I think this picture from the National Eczema Organization shows it well. All right, you guys, how are we going to treat it? You've got it, topical steroids once again and possible antihistamines. Another thing to note is that patients should use moisturizers to help with prevention. Also, definitely some patient teaching here with this one as it can be pretty self-inflicted and with some patients that will be easier to do with than others. Lichen sclerosis appears a bit differently than lichen planus. Lichen planus is only white and lacy in appearance if it occurs on the oral mucosal membranes. However, lichen sclerosis is almost always white in appearance and is primarily found on the genitalia. What age group is it common to see lichen sclerosis in? Definitely postmenopausal women and it typically affects their vulva in particular. Is this something that's contagious like an STI? No, like lichen planus, this is the result of an overactive immune system gone haywire. This also can be incredibly itchy for the patient and can lead to painful sex, tearing, or bleeding. If you look at the picture above from the Mayo Clinic, that is the typical presentation. This is also how it appears in the genitalia as well. So when our postmenopausal women come in complaining of this, what anticipatory guidance should we give to our patient? Is this going to go away in six months like lichen planus? Unfortunately not. This tends to reoccur more often than not. And what will be our primary treatment for this one? It's also like lichen planus with those topical steroids. This is the only exception to the rule, friends, in which those potent topical steroids can be used in the genitalia. 
We commonly use clobetazole, a topical high-potency corticosteroid for treatment. These patients are miserable and we need something strong to combat this skin disorder. What are we worried about in these particular patients? What are they at a higher risk for? And I'll give you a hint that it's a type of cancer. It's actually squamous cell carcinoma. So the highlights of what we just talked about include topical steroids. They are considered a treatment for all the different types of lichen skin disorders that we just discussed. All of these are also pretty itchy, so that can help guide diagnosis if we feel it looks comparable to another skin disorder. And of course, appearance guides diagnosis, which is why assessments are so important. All the lichens can run together, but if you can remember the differences in their appearance and where they are located, you will be ready for your NP exam. And that's it. This was a quick one. I hope it helps you differentiate between these three lichen skin disorders. Happy studying, friends.